We're going to skin a saw wet owl today. Its scientific name is Agolius acaticus. This bird was hit by a car on Kodiak Island back in March of 2006. Um, it's been kept in the freezer since then. It's well preserved. What I've done is weighed it. I've pre-labeled some tubes for the tissues. I've also measured it very quickly. The way we measure a bird is we measure the cord of the wing, unflattened wing, from the wrist to the tip. These calipers are a little short to show that beautifully. There's a wing measurement. There's a tail measurement that's done from the middle of the two rectrices to the tip. There's a tarsus measurement, which is the tarsometatarsus, or the bird's ankle, from the back of the ankle bone effectively to the uh, beginning of the toe bones. It's a measurement across the uh, tarsometatarsus. And then I've measured the bill as well, which is measured from the anterior edge, or the front edge of the nares, or nostrils, to the tip. It's a little difficult to see given the fluffy face of the owl, but the um, bill measurement is, is like this. And then we've measured the height of the bill at that point and the width as well. And then finally I measure the length of the skull because in the skinning process we'll, we'll uh, be breaking that skull to uh, pre prepare both the skin and the partial skeleton. Now before I actually prepare it, I'm gonna take some absorbent cotton and put it down the throat. One of the key things about preparing a bird is that you don't want body fluids to get onto the feathers. If they do, they gum those feathers up and they lose their shape and color. And uh, if you have to, you can wash the bird, but it's much more laborious. And we'll try to prevent us having to do that in this case. So I've put cotton down the throat. I've weighed it, I've measured it. I've got a couple of uh, tissue miles labeled for when I get the tissues out. Now I'm going to very gingerly move the feathers away from the ventral line of the bird and make an incision from the base of the furculum or up near the wishbone to effectively the cloaca. It's going to be a little difficult to see because this is such a fluffy bird. Um, I'm making that incision here. I'm careful not to cut through the abdomen wall because I don't want to have intestines coming out but uh, sometimes that happens and you just have to be a little more cautious with keeping the fluids off of the feathers. With that incision made, I should point out that effectively the only instruments I like to use are a pair of uh, forceps and a scalpel at this point. Eventually I'll use a pair of scissors as well. I'll lift the edge of the skin up away from the bird then I'll use the, the closed forceps as a probe to uh, push the meat away from the skin or the body away from the skin. Now you can see the juices are visible. What I do now is put some corn cob dust or other absorbent like cornmeal or even potato starch they use in Russia uh, to absorb those fluids and prevent them from getting onto the feathers and gumming them up. Now it becomes hard to see but uh, by, by feel it's quite easy to uh, continue easing the skin away from the body. What I want to do now is expose the legs so that I can stick the uh, knees out and cut those knees free. So I'm doing this by touch mostly, but you can see the knee popping free. I will disarticulate that with my scalpel now, um, separating the knee from the rest of the leg. Feel free to speak louder. Okay. And the air ventilation system does turn Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So I've separated that leg from the knee, and we're going to save a partial skeleton and a skin both on this. And I usually save the left leg if it's, uh, I save a complete leg with the partial skeleton. In this case, neither leg is broken. So I'm going to save the left leg with the skin. I've broken the humerus or the head of the bone off of that, sorry, and um, I'm taking the meat off. This will then stay with the skin. I'm now using a little corn, corn cob dust to get a better grip on that meat, clean that bone shaft up. Then I'll take just a little bit of cotton and uh, rebuild that muscle that I've just removed. And tuck that leg back into its skin like so. That leg is now completely done. You can see the knee sticking up there. I'm going to do the same now with the other side, the right side. Pull that knee up 
pop it through, make it visible, disarticulate it. But on this leg, instead of keeping it with the skin, I okay, I've disarticulated that. I keep keeping that juice from getting on the feathers. I'm pulling it down. Then what I do is simply cut the skin on the inside on that foot, pull that leg completely free. That leg now will set aside for uh, the, the partial skeleton, which we'll complete here in a moment. I'm adding more dust to be sure I don't get too much uh, fluid on owl feathers in particular are difficult to wash and dry. Now there's so much of it in there absorbing fluid that I can't see it. I'll take a little out and I'll work continue working down the side of the carcass and toward the tail to free the bottom half of the body from the skin. I'll do this on both sides. Now this is one of the more difficult things for new people who are learning how to skin to effectively accomplish. But I've freed up most of the tail and now I'm going to feel where the tail articulates to the body and use my scissors to cut the flesh and bone free down to that point. I'm holding my finger behind there so I don't cut through the skin. My finger on the back side will keep those scissors from poking through the skin and cutting those. It's a small, relatively small bone but with some flesh around it. I'll now throw some more dust in there so that I don't get the uh, intestinal fluids onto the feathers. Hold that leg and peel this around, thus removing the tail. And now the back side of the body is free. There are the two legs we've cut free, the tail, and I'm moving up toward the wings. And I'll next disarticulate the bird at the shoulders. Again, as I move along and expose new flesh, I throw uh, corn cob dust in there to absorb the fluids easing, pushing effectively, never pulling the skin away from the body. Okay, I can see the first shoulder musculature coming visible. I'm going to disarticulate that muscle and that joint right through to the skin. You can see the skin is that dark surface there. I've got more uh, meat showing, more fluids. Put some more corn cob dust on there to absorb those fluids turn the bird over, work from the other side, right shoulder, that joint is becoming visible. Again, disarticulate that to the skin. Now I've got the whole body free to the neck. Owls have large heads, but you can still pull the skull through the neck hole. I'm pushing the skin away from the neck meat, moving up towards the skull, back of the head. I'm using my thumbnail now to push that skin away. Once again, you don't want to be pulling on this skin because pulling can easily tear the tender skin of a bird. But pushing like this uh, is a very effective way to remove the skin from uh, the body and head. Now I'm coming here to the ears. Owl ears are quite large and I need to work gingerly with that so I don't cause a tear. I'm pushing those away with my finger and with my thumb. In passerines and other small birds, you may uh, want to grab that and pinch it and roll it out so that you um, don't tear the ear skin. Again, on the left side of the skull, do the same. Gingerly roll that skin out of the ear. Now I'm pushing up toward the base of the bill and I'm just able to see the eyes now through the skin and I'll very carefully cut those rims away from the eyes careful not to cut the ring of plumage and skin around the eye itself these eyes are, have been in the freezer and are a little shrunken but uh, hopefully you can see the edge of the eye through the skin those 
you'd like to not pop the eyes too because there's a lot of fluid in there that can uh, soak into the plumage and uh, discolor it and uh, mat it.